This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. The final presidential debate is tonight, and we have the conclusion of our interview with a little boy who is becoming a household name thanks to his resemblance to the Republican presidential nominee. Good evening and thank you for joining us at FYI. I'm Lisa Sugard. Ken Carra is on assignment tonight. Time now for our headlines from FYI and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. Professors at Pennsylvania's 14 state universities went on strike early this morning. The strike was announced by the Association of Pennsylvania State College and University Faculties after it failed to reach an agreement with the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education. The state says students should report to their classes unless told otherwise by their respective schools. More than 100,000 students are affected by the strike, which includes Bloomsburg, East Stroudsburg, Kutztown, and Lock Haven Universities. Vice President Joe Biden is coming to our area later this week to campaign for Hillary Clinton. The Vice President will make an appearance at Wilkes University in Wilkes-Barre Friday. The event will be held at the University Center on Main Street. The doors will open at 1.30 p.m. with the actual event at 3.30. Those interested in attending can register at HillaryClinton.com. Well, tonight marks the third and final debate between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. The Republican and Democratic nominees take the stage at the University of Nevada in Las Vegas. Fox News anchor Chris Wallace will serve as the moderator, and that debate will begin at 9 o'clock this evening. Well, speaking of the election and the debate, it is one of the few positive stories to come out of this year's presidential race. Today is promised part two of my interview with two-year-old Hunter Tierpak and his mother, Jessica. Hunter, who is now known all across the country and beyond as Baby Trump, was dressed like the Republican presidential nominee at a Trump rally at Mohegan Sun Arena in Wilkes-Barre Township earlier this month. Hunter ended up on stage with Donald Trump. Yesterday, I asked his mother about their newfound fame, and today we pick up that conversation, this time with baby Trump himself. Hunter, do you want to wave to our TV audience? Do you want to say hi? No. No? Hi. Who, who are you voting for? Do you, who, are, who are you with? Do you know who Donald Trump is? Do you know Trump? Trump. 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 Do you like Trump? Trump. Trump. And what were you trying to get him to say? Make America again. <laughs> Make America great again. Wow, you are awesome. Give a wave to the camera. Here, give look us a wave. Come on, put the cup back down. Look up, look up at Janine. Wave. Want to look up? Say Trump. Wait for them. Trump. Wow. I don't know. I don't think that uh, Donald Trump could have had a better uh, spokesperson for him than this. So where does it go after this now? What's your next plan? Um, we really don't have too much going on, which is kind of nice to take a little break. However, we are going to make some stops and appearances to do a little bit of campaigning. Want to say anything to our viewers? Want to tell them to vote? So you want to say vote? Vote. <gasps> Trump. Vote who? Vote for who? Vote. <laughs> He's Just being vote. diplomatic. Yeah. He's being diplomatic and telling you to vote. A great message from this little guy, two years old, who is making headlines all over. Do you want to shake and her hand? Do you, want to, your do you want to shake my hand? Hold. Shake your hand. I think the pot. Oh, there thank you go. so much. What a gentleman and a well-behaved little boy. Thank you so much for being here. You're this welcome. has been an absolute pleasure. Please you're keep welcome. us, you know, the part I failed to talk about was where you're from. You're really close to our studios. You're from Tuscarora. Right. So you're right here, a hometown family. Yes, yes, we are right outside of Tamaqua, a couple miles, and uh, we enjoy doing the local stuff. You know, it's brought so much positive attention to our little town of Tuscarora, to Schuylkill County in general, and, and we like doing these local things because we want to keep it here and uh, have a positive story come out of the area in regards to the campaign. Well, Hunter, when you run for office in the future, I hope that I get to interview you then. Or maybe he'll be taking my job. I'm not sure <laughs> which. But either way is OK. Do you want to say bye to everybody? You want to hold this and say bye? Bye. That's a wrap. <laughs> Wait. 
cute is that? Well, thank you to Hunter and his mother for taking time to come to our studios for what will surely be one of my all-time favorite interviews. And Hunter and his mom will also be guests on an upcoming episode of The Girls that will be seen next Friday here on SSP TV. In other news tonight, the Hazleton Area School Board has accepted the resignation of a teacher facing charges in connection with a hit-and-run crash. 54-year-old Kathleen Beltrami, a language arts teacher at Drums Elementary Middle School, is accused of hitting a motorcycle operated by Benjamin Minnick on September 7th in Butler Township. During a special meeting last night, the board accepted her resignation, effective January 24th. Hazleton City Council learned about two state programs that benefit financially strapped cities. A government policy specialist from the Department of Community and Economic Development explained two state programs during a meeting last night. Council wants to digest the information before making a decision. You can read more about, more about the programs in Sam Golsky's article in today's Standard Speaker and also at standardspeaker.com. Still to come, Dave Seaman, the sports editor of the Standard Speaker, is here for this week's installment of Dave Day. And don't buy those Halloween contact lenses yet until you hear what one local eye doctor has to say. This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Hey folks, welcome to this week's segment of Wild Bout Hunting. And hey, it's hunting season and you're in the woods all day long. Sometimes you might pack a short snack or maybe a bottle of water. You're tracking back into the state land or somewhere on private land for a long, long walk. You come out of there, you're hungry. The last thing you want to do is cook. So we're actually at a place where you can come get a great meal. We're at Fisher's Firehouse Grill today, and I'm with owners Jane and Dave Fisher. Guys, how are you? Not Good. bad. Thanks for having us here. Thanks for being here. All right. Folks, we are here today to kind of give you a little grand tour of Fisher's Firehouse Grill and some of the great eats that you can come and get here for some really great prices and you're never going to go home hungry that's for sure so dave we were looking you were making a really good looking sandwich there what was that sandwich that's my grilled italian and all my meats from soterios it's one of the best sandwiches here and you grill the everything and then you actually what kind of bread were you using there? i use snaps two pound loaves it's a nice size fills you up Oh, can't beat it. I'll tell you, folks, we've had a lot of their food here, and um, the sandwiches are to die for. And Jane, what else do you offer here at, the, at Fisher's Firehouse On Grill? On Wednesdays, we do little neck clams, mm -hmm. and during football season only, we close on the Super Bowl. After the Super Bowl, we're closed, and we do wings 50 cents. Oh. On Sundays. Sundays. On Sundays. Mm -hmm. And Saturdays, we have two for 10 hoagies. Any two hoagies on the menu except our Firehouse Filet for $10. The Philly works, whatever you want. Two and, for ten. And can you do takeout here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You and take out and you can eat in here too. And they have a we great have a little, little seating area. Yep. Right. You have a great little seating area um, that people can come in and sit. And if you were here for our kickoff party back in March, um, they made a ton of great food for all the guests that we have here and we are planning on coming back here for another kickoff party for season two and we'll make Dave work pretty hard again that night. <laughs> I enjoy it. <laughs> what, what else can folks uh, look forward to when they come here to Fisher's Firehouse? Well, Grill? we are located in the Butler Township Fire Hall, but we, you can't come in. You don't have to be a member to eat here. Okay. You come That's in, we have our own entrance, mm -hmm. our own you dining come right area. Come in through the kitchen. Come in through the kitchen, sit down, and you're good to go. And there you have it, folks. Family friendly, you can't beat the hospitality when you come in here. They always have a smile on your face, they'll joke with you, they have a good time, but the food out of this world, you can't beat it, you can't beat the place. Um, it's easy, you're located right off of uh, Butler, Drive. Butler Drive in 309 here in uh, Drums, Pennsylvania. And um, how can someone call to get a takeout? It's 570-788-7892. Okay. And we do catering also. Um, and we're here Wednesday and Thursday, 4 to 9, uh, Friday, Saturday, 4 to 10, and Sunday, 4 till 9, through the Super Bowl. 
And there you have it, folks. Give Fisher's Firehouse Grill a call. I guarantee you won't be disappointed. Any information, contact us at info at wildabouthunting.com. We'll see you next week somewhere in the hunting woods. Time now for FYI News 13 weather. Today was definitely too nice of a day to be working indoors. Let's see if we have any more good fortune for the remainder of this week. Here's your updated forecast from the National Weather Service. Tonight, increasing clouds are low around 53 degrees. Moving on to the four-day outlook. Rain tomorrow and tomorrow evening, possibly heavy at times. Tomorrow's high gets up around 63, our overnight low 54 degrees. The cloudy skies and rain will stick around for Friday. Friday's high temperature around 60, the overnight low dipping down to 40, so dress warmly for the Friday night football games. Morning showers should give way to sunshine on Saturday, a high of only 48 degrees, though pretty chilly. Saturday night, the mercury will then drop down to 36 degrees. And on Sunday, it looks sunny but quite cool, a high only near 50 degrees with an overnight low of 38 degrees. the corner are you planning to use those crazy and colorful contact lenses as part of your costume well i talked with a local eye doctor about the do's and don'ts for getting that scary look dr diem i guess first of all are there safe ways to utilize these special contacts that many people wear as part of their costume great question and i think we see it so much in the media we see it on uh, in movies we see all of these different things uh, on facebook of different lenses that are out there that you can use that make your eyes look totally different and make you look like a, 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 a ven venom coming out of your eyes or uh, make you look like a zombie, make you look like all different things. Um, and so to answer your question, yes, there are safe ways to do this. However, far and away, what most people will do is they'll search it online and find some ways that they could purchase them without the advice or direction of a doctor, uh, which is very dangerous. So if someone out there watching wants to utilize them, what's the best way to do it? Do they go to their family doctor to Correct. find out about it? Yeah, so, you know, I think first, first thing I would say uh, what not to do. Don't go online. Uh, don't go to your local gas station. Don't go to um, some boutique that you may find um, that, that has these at the checkout. Very common that we'll see, you know, down the shore or in some... And I'll just say it like it is, a, a sketchy gas station, <laughs> which may have these at the, at the checkout. And it really is unbelievably surprising, and it's against the law. So, you know, if you see those things, it's actually an illegal thing that they're doing because this is a medical device uh, that's placed on your cornea. Um, and, and these devices that are sold in this way are not medical grade. They're not FDA approved. And your eye is at major risk for infections um, and, and other very serious vision threatening or eye threatening conditions. So uh, what do you want to do? Um, you want to ask your uh, eye doctor whether or not they do provide this service. Some do, some don't. We at Hazelton Eye Specialists do. Um, we can fit you with a medical grade um, therapeutic colored lens or a, um, a, a lens that's made specifically for Halloween, but these lenses are, are of high quality. They breathe, they allow your eye to interact with the environment, which is very important. If they're not fitted properly, that could scratch your eye. I mean, it could lead to some serious consequences. Yeah, you know, and, and the material that these lenses are made out of have gone through years of, of research and development uh, to assure that you're getting the oxygen it needs from the environment and also making sure that natural bacteria and foreign bacteria don't invade uh, the cornea, which is very important. So you're absolutely right. If they're not fit properly, it could lead to, a, you know, a scratch or an abrasion. Um, but more seriously, uh, these materials, which you know could be coming from countries that have no regulations whatsoever on uh, medical devices and could lead to again vision threatening eye threatening conditions and, and it's things that are relatively common things that we see unfortunately and also one other thing before we go I want to ask you about what about the makeup a lot of people you know maybe the kids don't want to wear a costume or a mask so they put the makeup on as well can that be dangerous to the eyes as well it certainly can and it, you know to a lesser extent this is something that you hear about so I appreciate you bringing it up but certainly you know make sure you're reading the labels of any anything that you're placing on and or around the eye um, the eye is a very sensitive uh, tissue and um, certainly we do see people come in with chemical 
medical grade burns um, from using uh, different makeups or uh, things around their eyes that they may seem a good idea for the Halloween season, maybe look a little bit spooky, but you don't want to see how spooky your eye will look after some of these things have uh, their, their full effect. So just make sure you're reading the um, directions. Many uh, things will carry with it, especially if it's sold in, in the United States, uh, a warning on whether or not it should be applied anywhere in or around the eye. If you have an eye emergency, we're open 24 hours uh, for emergencies. Give our office a call and we'd be happy to help you out. Dr. Diem joins Dr. Thomas Kislin on Eye Care Today. They are from Hazelton Eye Specialists. Be sure to tune in for their shows to get other important eye care information. Right now, I hope you can see clearly we have the numbers up for the Pennsylvania Midday Lottery numbers. The pick 273, pick 3252, pick 43117, and the pick 529166. It's Dave Day in Sports coming up next right here on FYI. This is FYI News 13 Sports. Well, we're going to kick off the sports cast tonight with some local sports commentary from our Ken Cara and the standard speakers, Dave Seaman. After that, we'll hear from Hazleton's own Joe Madden. Welcome to another Dave Day on FYI as we welcome back Dave Seaman, the sports editor at the Standard Speaker. And Dave, this Friday at Harmon Geist Memorial Field, it will be homecoming for the Hazleton area Cougars and a lot of celebration. They got their first win of the season under their belts after a brutal, I mean really tough first part of that schedule. Now they have a chance, Dave, the Cougars to win maybe three straight. Dallas comes into town this week. Crestwood's been up and down. That's who the Cougars will close out with. It wasn't a pretty win, as I read from Steve Stallone in the Standard Speaker, but um, sometimes just getting that first win, breaking, you know, the water in the dam there. Maybe maybe good things ahead for Hazleton. Yeah, you need some, one of those things, like a, a little momentum builder, uh, that you take it any way you can get it, really. And uh, it, like Steve said in, in his column on, in uh, Sunday's edition that, uh, that it was a total team effort, uh, different contributions from a lot of different people. Sparky Wolk had a big game passing, probably his best passing game of the year. They did run the ball especially well. Uh, Adrian Otero probably had his least amount of yards that he had all year. But uh, you look what he did. He had a big time touchdown catch, uh, made a great catch on a ball that uh, Wolk threw up there and only uh, Otero can get it. He made a great play on the ball. Uh, David Smith, the sophomore, came up big with a fumble return for a touchdown and then taking a pass reception on a post pattern, uh, 80 yards for a touchdown to be the game winner. So you got a lot of young players playing and uh, you, you got to like, you got to find something that uh, put your hat on and uh, see where you, your hard work has been rewarded. Uh, maybe this will be a building block for the Cougars. And it is a pink out. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier at the stadium. Hazelton Area High School working with the Lehigh Valley Health Network. Fans encouraged to wear pink for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Dave, it was senior night for the Hazelton Area field hockey team as they get ready for the district playoffs. Next week, we'll put up the picture here. A um, few seniors for Hazelton Area. Annie and Mettler, Casey Deal, um, Margaret Fulton, Sierra Bannon, and Kelsey um, Hudock. Margaret Fulton, Dave, has been there and really um, been solid in the net for Hazelton Area in the goal. Um, kept them in games as they're building up that program. A lot to be proud of for her as Hazelton area has really established themselves in district two it looks like they'll get Delaware Valley at home to start the playoffs and possibly make another run at this district two title Lackawanna Trail will be the number one seed and the two of them tied earlier this year yeah I think the Lady Cougars too benefit too also this year because there are only three teams in the district no more playing against Valley West in the playoffs uh, Coughlin is no longer in their air classification so Lady Cougars have a chance to win their first district championship and I'm, I'm sure that's what coach Mary Kelly has been pointing toward and her team they've been pointing toward that all season and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a legitimate goal it's out there for them uh, the, the teams aren't uh, gr have great records the other teams in the classification so Lady Cougars it's there for them. So that will be next week. And Dave, today the um, Wyoming Valley Conference Cross Country Championship meet as well as the Schuylkill League um, Cross Country Championship meet. We talked with some of the Cougars on FYI yesterday. In the Schuylkill League, Dave, there's some really good teams. Um, the Mono area boys were undefeated in the league. Um, Tamaqua girls with Monica Shimko. Um, Chris McCormick and North Schuylkill, the boys, they're undefeated. Um, the two Serino, Seriano brothers um, from, I don't know if they're brothers, but they have the same last name. I'm Adam and Seth from Mono area. So there's a lot of talent down there in District 11. You mentioned a younger kid, too, from Weatherly. Uh, yeah, there's uh, Scotty's Ocean, who's uh, an up-and-comer. Steve Stallone did a fabulous story on him and uh, how he draws inspiration from uh, uh, the late coach, Josh Kiddish, who unfortunately passed away before the season. Uh, he's been breaking records left and right all season, and you can't forget about the Caparel sisters either at Marion. Uh, uh, both fantastic runners. Uh, Tina's been up and down with the injury this year, but uh, 
Uh, they're going to make some noise at the league and the district meet next week. So uh, cr if you're a cross-country fan, you're a runner, uh, now's the time of year for you. Another Dave Day in the books. Dave, we look forward to seeing you again next week. You made it to the middle of the work week. Reward yourself at Bottlenecks. It's their featured steak entree night with plenty of amazing steak options. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. First tonight, Valley Regional Fire and Rescue will be holding a chicken barbecue all to benefit firefighter Melissa James. The event will be held Saturday, October 22nd from noon to 5 p.m. They'll also be having tricky trays and 50-50 raffles. Free delivery is available to businesses within 7 miles and over 10 orders. For more information, please call 570-788-1886. Next announcement on Monday, October 24th from 2 to 6 p.m., the Health and Wellness Center at Hazleton, along with the Miller Keystone Blood Center, will be hosting a blood drive at the center. The Miller Keystone Blood Center is the only blood supplier to 21 regional hospitals. To register or for more information, please call 570-501-6204. Our next announcement, Tresco Hosey will be holding a pasta dinner fundraiser for the American Cancer Society on Sunday, October 23rd from noon to 5. Walk-ins are welcome and takeout is available. Cost is $8 for adults and $5 for children. They'll also be having tricky trays and a 50-50 raffle. All proceeds benefit the telethon. And finally, the Diamond Fire Company No. 2 is sponsoring a fall bingo Sunday, October 23rd at Good Shepherd Church in Drums. Doors open at noon, bingo starts at 1, and I'll have plenty of cash prizes. Tickets are $25 in advance or $30 at the door, and for info, just call 570-436-5407. At tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Paul Peter Ballin, the McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home will announce complete arrangements. Mary E. Ferry of Freeland, the McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home will announce complete arrangements. And Beatrice B. Geis of Shepton, arrangements are under the direction of the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name right now on News 13, you'll have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Our winner tonight is John Basic of Sugarloaf. John, if you're watching, give us a call, 570-455-7267, extension 104. And that will do it for us this evening on FYI. For breaking news, go to our media partner, standardspeaker.com, or our Facebook page as well. Kenny's back tomorrow night. We'll see you then.